Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gearing up for the Ryzen 3000 launch on Sunday. Super psyched. So, in order to get ready for that, I'm doing a quick video on my Intel 9700K rig. My Intel 9700K rig is going to go head to head with the new AMD processor of the same price. So, the 9700K will be paired up against the 3700X or the 3800X, depending on the price of the 9700K at launch. Now, the Price of the 9700K is rumored to be getting lowered by $60, so it should compete against the 3700X, and that's what you're going to see as a placeholder on today's benchmarks. Today I will be benchmarking games, content creation, temps, power, and this is an air-cooled rig, so it will go head-to-head -head against the AMD air-cooled. And all game benchmarks are going to be done in 1080p today. 1080p stresses the CPU the most, so it'll show the biggest difference between the two CPUs. Okay, so we can see here that my 9700K rig is running at 4.9 gigahertz all core, AVX offset zero, air cooled by the Be Quiet Dock Rock Pro 4. And most people think you need a custom loop, liquid cooling, or a really good AIO to run a 9700K or 9900K, but that's just not true. At certain settings, you can run Intel's ninth generation on air cooling, as long as you have a really good air cooler like Noctua's D15 or the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. I've also paired that with G-Skill Trident Z, 16 gigabytes of that at 3200 CL14, XMP profile loaded, my Gigabyte Z390 RS Pro Wi-Fi motherboard running the very latest BIOS, F9, an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win, with the latest NVIDIA driver, 430.86, a Fractal Design Meshify C Dark TG case with Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans. And lastly, Windows 10 running the very latest version, 1903, all updates apply, and default mitigation settings. And default mitigation settings are going to be what most people are running, as most people do not mess with mitigation settings. Moving on, I wanted to let you know about my goals with this build. The build was made for video and music production as well as competitive gaming. The Intel 9700K was selected as I wanted a really fast frequency processor, but I also want it to be a fixed frequency. So in this case, I'm running 4.9 gigahertz on all the cores, all the time as well as AVX offset of zero, keeps it at that same frequency even when AVX instructions are passed to it. 100% of the time for the lowest latency. As well, I selected the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 as I needed a cooler that was as close to silent as possible, and it definitely is. It's one of the quietest coolers that has this cooling capacity of 250 watts, but it also keeps my processor uh, at under an average of 95 degrees Celsius. I've also chosen the G-Skill Trident Z 16 gigabyte dual channel kit at 3200 CL14 as that's the lowest latency for 3200 RAM possible. So let's get into the benchmarks. On to the six game average, we see that my PC hits exactly 200 FPS on average uh, across six games running 1080p. Moving on to the more detailed benchmarks, Shadow the Tomb Raider at 1080p highest graphics settings. In DirectX 12, I get 106 FPS on average, as well as a 95 percentile low of 80 FPS. In DirectX 11 is much worse, so we definitely want to run DirectX 12. I get 89 FPS with a 95 percentile low of 56 FPS. As well, in the bottom right corner, I've indicated that this is a game that is within G-Sync or FreeSync range and would pair really well with those types of monitors. Destiny 2 at 1080p, highest settings for graphics. On the 9700K, we get 151 FPS on average. 95 percentile low is 129 FPS. Again, a great title for G-Sync or FreeSync. Next up, we have Fortnite at 1080p, highest settings. Average FPS in this was 141 FPS with a 95 percentile low of 114 FPS. Again, a great title for G-Sync or FreeSync. Moving on to League of Legends at 1080p, highest graphics settings, the 9700K did 298 FPS, which is exceptional. The 95 percentile low is only 259 FPS. That is plenty of FPS that we do not need G-Sync or FreeSync. As long as we have a high refresh rate monitor, 
Next up, we have CSGO at 1080p, highest graphics settings. Average FPS in this game was an exceptional 386 FPS. That is plenty of FPS that we just need a high refresh rate monitor. G-Sync or FreeSync is not needed for this title. On to Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, ultra graphic settings. We got an average of 116 FPS. Again, a great title for G-Sync or FreeSync. Next up, we got 3D Mark Firestrike at 1080p Ultra. Score was 6,895. Then we have 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme running at 1080p. Score was 4,197. Then we have Super Position running at 1080p Extreme. We got 4,211 points. Now on to the content creation benchmarks. In Blender Benchmark, we were able to complete it in 1,240 seconds. And in Geek Bench 4, we got a single core score of 6,345 with a multi-core score of 31,398. In Cinebench R15, we got a single core score of 213 and a multi-core score of 1,615. In Cinebench R20, we got a single core score of 512, with a multi-core score of 3,904. In Azus Realbench, we got a system score of 145,937. In the V-Ray Benchmark, in K-Samples, we got 10,924. Now on to the power and temps. To start with, we're going to look at the average idle temperature, which was 46 degrees Celsius. The average package power during that time was 35 watts. And the voltage to the processor at that time was 1.382 volts. Our limit for the 9th gen Intels, we want to keep under 1.4, so this definitely does. And this will be the highest score as idle pulls the most voltage as it's pulling the least watts. Next up, we have a normal workload, like a gaming workload. Power and temps average for this were 70 degrees Celsius with 94 watts used at 1.368 volts. And then lastly, for a heavy workload, let's consider this like a blender workload that's extended use. The power and temp average for that is 95 degrees Celsius. The package power for that was 170 watts and the voltage during that time was only 1.347. So as you saw, the rig's a beast, and I'm really looking forward to see if AMD can keep up this generation. If you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when I cover more tech, including the Ryzen 3000 launch on Sunday. Later guys.